Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland love every racing moment visit hri.ie you're very welcome along to Friday Night Racing. It is Owen and Johnny with you for the next hour or so. And I'm delighted to say we've got special guest Katie Walsh in studio as well. You're very welcome, Katie. Thank you very much. How are Great things? Here. Great, yeah. Great, not a bother. So as Johnny pointed, helpfully pointed out when he came into studio, there is a, a new arrival on the way. Yes, new arrival on the way. Well spotted. You wanted being pregnant only, only, being a big stuckler. <laughs> <laughs> only six weeks away, so... <laughs> you are pregnant, aren't you? Yeah. Definitely pregnant. Definitely pregnant. Um, yeah, that'll be a big development. Yeah, well, mad looking it is, forward to it now. I'm mad looking forward to it, so um, big changes keep me out of trouble anyway, but uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, it's uh, something to keep you a bit more busy in retirement anyway, that's for sure. And people, like, was this something actually you considered during uh, your career as a jockey? Because it, it's something that obviously that Nina Carberry, I think, took time out uh, when she was pregnant and came back to being a jockey after that. Yeah, um, yeah. I suppose for me, I, um, I just wanted to... Um, um, I always wanted to have a family, but um, I wanted to get the, the writing done first and uh, then the plan was to retire and then hopefully start a family and I'm lucky enough that's the way it's worked out. Um, I didn't really want to um, uh, start a family and then go back race riding. Um, that's just not the way it worked out for me. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's to be big changes, but um, yeah, it's part and parcel of, I suppose, being a, being a female jockey as well and decisions that have to be made, you know. So, Probably something um, that's like is becoming a bit more to the fore that it is, it's not, it's not easy, you know. You can't like you can, you can't go on to your 50 really and be a jockey unless you want to have kids and that puts you in a difficult situation, I suppose. Uh, yeah, exactly. I suppose it's just part and parcel of it. I mean, for me, I wanted to have a, a family. I can't speak for, for everybody but it's their decisions that have to to be made in every walk of life and um, I suppose it just depends on what way you want to go about it. It's not exactly something that if you did decide that it completely ends your career either as I said Nina came back and did pretty well uh, after she returned as well like so it's not either or at the same time. Yeah but it's different and it's different um, I suppose I would imagine and I'm sure Nina would say the same it's a different responsibility then as well because mm. it's not just you and uh, that's something that has to be um, um, I'm sure played in the back of Nina's mind as well you know definitely when she came back after having Rosie, she definitely, uh, she rode obviously on the fringe and a couple of those good horses over fences, but she definitely was careful about what she picked and what she rode over fences. Right. And, um, Why was that? I'd say it's a bit of responsibility. She had a big responsibility at home. She had a, a little person depending on, on her now and um, she just, I suppose it's a natural feeling, I suppose, of, of a female and of a woman and of Nina and I, I would feel the same way, but um, I'm sure... We can't speak for everybody, but um, I'm sure there's women that wouldn't bother them at all. But I definitely know from Nina's point of view, and for mine, that's why I wanted to um, uh, maybe retire and then maybe start a family. I know accidents can happen anywhere, but it's just it's different, I suppose. It's different when you uh, become a mother. Uh, I uh, for, for us anyway. Yeah, that's very interesting. I didn't even think of it like that because it doesn't matter. It's not about motherhood. It's about being a parent in general, really. At, at that point, where you have something far more important in your life, and the huge dangers that come with the sport become far more acute. Yeah, exactly. And there is um, there is um, dangers with it. There's dangers in every walk of life. But mm. definitely, I think you have a bigger responsibility and it's not just you anymore. And um, I suppose that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. So what are you doing day to day these days? You're working in your father's yard. I think you're just back from Doncaster as well. Yeah. Uh, at a sale over there, Goffs. Yeah, just back from the sales uh, yesterday morning. Um, that's, that all starts now. Uh, France was on a couple of weeks ago in Deauville in Arcana. And um, then the next one was Doncaster and then um, obviously Keeneland will start up along with um, Ferry House is on in two weeks time and then uh, Goffs Orby and then it goes straight into Newmarket then so um, uh, I um, buy and sell Breeze of Horses I buy yearlings to pin hook them to sell them back mm. as Breeze of Horses next March, April, May um, it's something that my father would have done before me it's something that I kind of uh, I've been doing for the last good few years now it's on the side from race riding as well it was something that I wanted to get into as well so uh, I've been lucky enough that it's um, built up over the years it's done alright I enjoy mm, yeah. yeah done well some good years some bad years what's the but, secret uh, you'll have that there's no secrets yeah. good horses good no, horses you, 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 you obviously you have to buy low sell high 
So how do you ma that's manage the plan, your budget? But like? That's not always the way it works out, Johnny. Do you know? Mm. And um, you have to be lucky enough to uh, be very careful. It's very, um, I suppose, when you're spending your own money, it's um, you know th that's a big responsibility as well. Mm. And uh, it's not only your money now; it's the family's yeah, money. Yeah, like that's you know? it exactly. Yeah. And um, I suppose everyone can make mistakes, but um, you know t when you when you get hit hard. Um, you know, it's hard to get stuck back in the next year and go again. But that's really and truly what you have to do. You have to get stuck back in and go again. You can't skip a year. That's the year you have to, to, to go back in. Must be a good buzz out of it, though, as well. There is, there is a great buzz out of it. Uh, financially, it it can be a great help. It's obviously run through the business at home. I'm based at home every day with uh, Dad and uh, the office is Jennifer and Mam, and uh, it wouldn't happen without them. Um, I'm certainly no good in an office. That's a well-known mm. fact. I can barely send an email. So myself and dad are out, outside in the yard and uh, uh, the two girls do uh, the office, which is a huge help. And um, it's a family-run business and it's uh, something that we really enjoy. And it's been lucky for us over the years. Some, as I say, some good years, some bad years. But you just have to get um, stuck in and roll the dice again. And that eye that you have to perhaps turn over a profit, is that something that you can teach? Is it something that just being around horses for your entire life just you help it builds up that expertise over time. Yeah, you know, I think you probably learn from mistakes as well and you know, I've made plenty of mistakes and um it's um it's it's interesting because often, you know, I'm 34 now and often I will buy a horse and oh, send it home. I was going to ask you, um, I was like, please <laughs> say your age, please say your age. What age do you retire? <laughs> uh, so um, often I'll buy one and it'll go home, but I'll be still be waiting for the phone call to come from Dad to say whether he approves or whether he doesn't. And obviously he's not too shy with his information. But would you, would you have the approve. same, like, would you have, would you generally strike a chord in that? Like? Oh, we would, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, um, you know, um, we would definitely be going along the same hymn sheet. We, we we must be. I've been working in the yard with Dad since I left school, so I've been there a long time. So everything that I've learned, I've learned from him. Mm. So um, obviously there's some times there that we mightn't agree on on things, whether it be to do with race horses or breeze up horses. But um, um, generally, it's uh, we're, we're both singing off the same hymn sheet anyway. He, he's from a different era, but you know, a horse is a horse. Now, so you see the new pedigrees coming through, the new stallions and all that. Is his way of looking at a horse any different to yours? Uh, no, I would say that that's, that would be very much alike. I wouldn't be... There's some people who are... Um very good. I'm sure, like you, like you, be very good at reading the form. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I wouldn't be great at reading the form, to be honest with you. But I'd like to know what was a good race and what was a bad race. Um, for me, the pedigrees, I would have to work hard at the pedigrees. Like obviously, something that real good pedigree that's very good will jump out at you all day long. You don't need yeah. to be a MacGyver to figure it yeah. out. But there is some people who have a real natural gift and a, you know, they've worked hard at it, and it's something that they're. It just comes naturally. Jane Mangan, obviously, you know, she's a, she's unbelievable. Like she's she can really see the pedigree you know she's looking at them visualize all day it visualize like, yeah. it yeah whereas that would be whereas I'd be more kind of focusing um, the individual like yeah that. the mm. individual and sire obviously is hugely important and um, uh, confirmation wise that would that would be um, and something I suppose that I can maybe see it a twist in because you have one now say but I mean it goes back in six or seven months time you'll be hoping he'll be bigger and stronger and you know obviously he'll have to tick all the right boxes when he goes back but he'll hope he'll improve and he won't go backwards on you. Yeah that's very interesting when you talk about people who may be able to identify very good pedigree like what, what is it about those people how do they differ from you is it just a different way of looking at the game or how no, is it? I just mean as in like they're probably they're looking at pedigrees their whole lives mm. and reading catalogues their whole lives, and I'm sure if I they can memorise as well, I think like they yeah. can they can well, they know what them. works well with yeah. what, and they know yeah. what crosses work well with different things. Whereas I'd be, but I mean, obviously we all know that you know you could, that can all be lovely as well. But if the individual isn't good enough and the horse mm. isn't good enough, um, usually it's not good enough, mm. regardless of pedigrees, like humans. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, on a day-to-day -day base then, when, when you are actually in the yard, what are you doing? You say you don't like to be in an office, uh, you like to be out on your feet all the time. What is your day-to-day -day role? Yeah, so basically um, I will go to the yard every morning and I'll have a chat with Dad every morning, buy the racing post, give it to him, ha um, have, have a chat, we'll do the board and we'll go from there. Uh, we all will tack up first lot and we'll muck out and then um, the lots will go from there. Then the racehorses will all get done first and 
then when all the resources are done, then we move out. Everyone goes to a cup of tea. We've got great staff, thank God. We're very lucky, you know, blessed. It's, it hasn't been easy staff-wise with the racing industry mm. and stud industry. And um, uh, everyone sings it soft, same hymn sheet. So uh, then after a cup of tea, then we'll all get stuck into the breezers then. I mean, this is probably the longest and hardest time because they'll, um, they all have to get, obviously... Uh, broken and long reined and driven which is very time consuming and uh, you need good people on the ground that are able to do that and then, but when they're actually riding that's the easiest because it's a lot less more time consuming mm. and um, then they'll have a break then the breezes will have a break over Christmas and then you get stuck back into them then in January so uh, last year we were we were extremely busy dad had um, um, you know we, we, we have a lovely bunch of horses there now and there's um yeah dad loves a good horse like anybody but he really does appreciate them and love them and we were lucky enough for any second out to win the cumure last year which was definitely the highlight uh we would only have somewhere between 20 and 25 national hunt horses so um looking forward to this um season again and hopefully uh have between kind of 20 and 25, maybe 30 breeze of horses. So um, it's busy, it's kept going. It seems to me that you would have always been highly aware of everything that was going on in the yard throughout your entire life. But do you feel that you've immersed yourself even further into the goings on in the yard post uh, being, a, being a jockey? Uh, yeah, I've always been there, uh, to be honest. Uh, maybe I should have maybe spread my wings a little bit and saw maybe a bit more, but I loved it. Mm. I loved being home. I loved working at home. I loved being part of it. And um, I rode out in Willies, obviously, when yeah. I was riding and used to ride work on the curb. But I was mainly at home, and um, I loved being part of that. Um, so I've seen the ups and downs, like everyone in the racing industry. You know, there's... Um, but the back room, the, you know, in the... In the background, you know, there's some very hard days and there's, you know, there's, especially for a small team, if a horse gets a leg, you know, that can really hurt a small team, you know, and it's it's very much part of the game. So um, there's there's been plenty of um, lower days, but loads of great days as well. So I've been uh, extremely lucky, but I love it. I love, I absolutely love my life. I wouldn't oh, calm down there, for Katie. anyone. Bloody hell, like, <laughs> love it. we work in offices, you know. Yeah, sorry, but well, you, you were swimming in the 40 foot <laughs> oh, yeah. and you still have your shorts. Sonny, but we can't even um, see them underneath the desk. Jeez. Got flip flops <laughs> on as well, Johnny. Um, <laughs> do you, when you say you could have spread your wings, what do you mean there? Like gone abroad or um, like oh, t- sure. picked up things like in different maybe jurisdictions? Maybe so. Or? Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably maybe I could have gone maybe to different yards and did a stint here and there, but I didn't. I was very much a home bird. And, um, you know, I was riding as an amateur as well. And, you know, it's very hard to get up and leave. You know, I got I had my license when I was 17, 18. So I rode as an amateur and you're not just going to, that was going well and I enjoyed it. And, um, you know, you're not just going to stop then and go you know um uh, i i didn't go i didn't go to college i didn't go to uh um i didn't go to australia say and travel or take a year out i never did but i never really wanted to to be honest I really was, no, yeah. no 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 I was no your interest. dad like um he, he lived in the states for a good while didn't he back yeah well they the moved there as a family yeah. for work yeah you know that was yeah. that was um, obviously I uh, that was years upon years ago. But um, they, they they had moved for like a lot of people did. They had moved for uh, a better life, I suppose, and to, to make a few quid. And lucky enough, they were able to do it. And then uh, they made a decision when Dad and Joan got a bit older, his sister, uh, to come home before they started school. But um, yeah, you know he um, Dad, as I said to you earlier, Dad's a memory like an elephant and great stories. And um, I'm sure he only heard the half of it the last time he was. <laughs> <laughs> towards a tenth of it, I think. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it was great having them on. Why didn't you want to move to Australia or, or do anything like that and, and spread your wings beyond Ireland? What was it about it that kept you here? Uh, I suppose home. I loved home. Homebird loved the business at home. It's a family-run business, and it's. Um, I was very much involved in it from from the get-go. School wasn't for me. I couldn't I hated it. Couldn't stand school whatsoever. And I'd uh, um, uh, I was well behaved, and I did everything I should have done. But clocked uh, in, clocked w- out. Clocked in, clocked yeah. out. But uh, I, I, I could. Academically, um, I didn't like the books, and um, I uh, I was allowed. I approached my parents; they knew I wasn't happy, and um, I said, "Listen, I, I really don't like it. Uh, is there any chance of me maybe, you know, going down the road of doing something else?" Mm. And uh, yeah, they did. It was no problem, thank God. Which was a big decision at the time for them, you know, as a lot of people, um, you know, wouldn't have approved. I'm sure would have thought that I should have maybe finished it off. But uh, it was definitely the right decision for me anyway, without doubt. 
without doubt. I had no interest in going to college. I remember my mother saying, um, you know, if you, if you do this now, there'll be no leaving certain, there, you know, you won't be able to maybe go away and go to college. And, and I, I tried, it didn't bother me at all. So I ended up doing a computer course. And um, so you still can't send an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but um, I was able to ride horses, Johnny. Uh -huh. so, oh, that yes. was, so that was a help. <laughs> you looked a lot like your dad there. He looked at his like, oh God, <laughs> get that look. Um, you were, you were, you had a great career as well. When you think about it, did you ever think of turning pro? No, no, never. I had the best of all worlds. I loved, loved, loved uh, being amateur, and uh, I had. Um, Great days, great opportunities, obviously, with Dad and rode my first winner on a horse called Hannon in Gorham Park. And then uh, kind of went from there. I got my license for a bit of fun, to be honest, to ride in a few ladies' races. But um, kind of went from there. Then I uh, ended up riding one for Willie, a mare called Avoca Mist. He rang me to ride one in Turles in a ladies' race. And uh, she won. She skated in. And uh, she went on a couple of weeks later and she won uh, our winner's bumper in at the Easter Festival in Fairy House and then he let me ride her then in Aintree uh, a couple of weeks after that in the mare's bumper which was huge Ooh, I was still claiming seven you know and that kind of really got the ball rolling from there that was a great experience it was the same year actually that Hedgehunter uh, won the national at Ruby I remember uh, Paddy saying I thought he was an even money shot he just had to get around and uh, he was that confident because uh, he rode him differently to the day before to the year before when yeah. David Casey rode him yeah. and bolted up um, wh how would you describe Willie? A gent. Yeah. And absolutely, he's, he's a gent. Nothing but ultimate praise uh, for Willie. A great man, great man to ride for, a gent. Um, you know, never, um, always kind of, if you really wanted to do something, there wasn't a problem. And other than that, you never really opened your mouth too much and just, uh, you did what you were told and keep your head down. But he be loyal as well, though, isn't oh, he? So yeah. loyal. Mm. Over the years, oh, it's, it's, like there's no one like him. Mm. There's no one like him. Has your back um, 100%. Um, no, like if the great thing about Willie as well, if he came in, if you made a mistake, and in racing across the board, you have to be able to come in and say, oh, listen, I'm sorry about that. I wasn't at my best there. And, you know, and he'd say, you're right, you weren't, you know, and but if you come in and you start talking around and pretend and that you know it was something else and I mean you won't survive in racing and that just doesn't work there's just no room for that and you need to be able to do it so there's great life lessons and but going back to Willie he was great he was huge for my career I wouldn't have ridden the colour of the winners without mm -hmm. um, the, riding for him great associations with thousand stars and opportunities to ride in France and French champion hurdles and different occasions and um, absolutely uh, phenomenal you know really good spins a couple of those good handicap hurdles county hurdles I always went to Chetlam every year. You a know. lively sort of chance. Like. Well, I was always going there. You know, for me, not turning professional it was kind of, well, I was riding at a height as an amateur. I was definitely going to have one in the four mile and maybe one in the Kim Yor, maybe one for Willie in the bumper and a chance of getting something else. So I was going there with maybe three, if maybe four rides. And there was lads at, at home, professionals, that never got a chance to pack the bag to ride in Cheltenham. So Mark Walsh hadn't ridden a winner at Cheltenham until, what, last year, I think? Yeah, spare, actually. Um, he rode you know, for like, Willie for Luke. Like, uh, as good a rider as you Blueberry, see. Blueberry, was yeah. it? Yeah. And he, then he rode, obviously, Esper Delane, the late Esper Delane, but Thousand Stars, like, what do you remember of the race itself? Like, and it did kind of go a bit like clockwork. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I had ridden him in, 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 in Nace, and, uh, in, sorry, in, in Fairy House in a good uh, hurdle race. I was really foggy that day. And um, uh, he, he came out the fog. And remember, Ruby was gone to England that day. And he said, listen, he can be a bit keen. He said, have you ridden him? I said, no. He says, go down. He said, tomorrow morning and ride him out. So I went down and I rode him out the previous morning. And I was just grand to think of a handle on him. And I came back up then. And, uh, you know, it was one of those days in Freyhouse where really you couldn't see your hand. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I dropped him in I got a great bit of cover and it was great and he, he had moved the cover of the all fog the gears as well, like, and the whole lot yeah. and uh, he had all the gears and he arrived there at the back of the second last of his head in his chest and um, then actually I rode him in the Pierce Hurdle it was then that Leperstown and um, I was going to bounce him out with a bit handy behind the pace but he ran too free he ran far too free and he fell into a hole and then it came round into the county hurdle and um, I didn't think I was riding him I didn't think I had any ride going to Shetland that year and um, uh, it's 
Jennifer was obviously doing agent for Ruby and um, the phone um, rang and Witty said, listen, there's Thousand Stars is there. Katie's written in the last twice. Does she want to write him in the County Earl? Jen said, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so then I said I'd maybe write him the same way I wrote him in uh, mm, Fairy, Fairy House. House yeah. So um, I came in to get the saddle and he took the saddle and he said, well, and I said, I might write him the, the same way I, I Wrote him uh, back in. I won't write him as handy. I said he was too keen the last day. Yeah, yeah, whatever you think. And um, it didn't drop him in. I was second or third last every step of the way. But sure, sure, he went on to. Do you know what I mean? He was a. Uh, he was a, he was a great at horse, you know, yeah. running and handicap yeah. company. So he was hacking top of the hill. He was hacking. He got all the runs and the splits. And it was a huge run from the second last to the last hurdle in the county hurdles, about three furlongs. And um, I'd walked the track a couple of times and I knew exactly. And it all just worked out. And especially when you're riding a horse that, as I said, went on to win a couple of grade ones, you know, um, um, in handicap company, he arrived there with his head in his chest. It was a uh, yeah. proud day for your dad. It was a great year. Well. Yeah, it was my second winner in Cheltenham. And I'd only ridden one two days previous. Um, Poker de Savola won the four mile for, for Eddie Murphy. And that was a huge day as well. So um, a race that actually dad uh, uh, never won. So uh, <laughs> um, yeah. It's the old dig yeah, in there. Yeah, the old dig in there. There was yeah. a photo of him actually, Mouse Morris' son had a photo of him uh, on on uh, Twitter lately where he's probably 30, 35 years ago. He looks, an, he looks awful like Ruby. Like, Who did oh, you think? Such a... Um, Uncanny. Yeah, I hadn't seen a photo of... Uh, it was like, uh, I think it was... Dermot Wells, Ted and Mouse Morris uh, when they were riding. And it was a great photo from the annals and uh, you could certainly see Ruby in them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about there, Katie, because it's very interesting when you mention about Willie Mullins and the idea that you like can't be one of those people who tries to talk yourself out of situations. You've got to own up to your mistakes yeah. and you'll get found out very quickly in this game. Like We often wonder why we're such a successful nation when it comes to this industry. Like Is that one of the reasons that compared to other sports people, people who are involved in racing just have a lower tolerance for crap. They own up to their mistakes a bit more and that ultimately is kind of a more direct way of uh, identifying a high performance uh, kind of environment. Yeah, I suppose, you see, the thing is with horse racing is you're only really as good as your last winner and um, you, you can never get too big for your boots and you have to take responsibility for your, for your mistakes. So you're better off just coming back in and saying, that didn't work out, uh, I'm really sorry about that. And then obviously there'll be other days then where people just won't be happy. There's a lot of pressures within the sport and within the game and you need to know whether when to keep your mouth shut and when not and mm. when to be able to stand up and maybe defend what you did. And uh, But the main thing is if, if you think you've made a mistake, the main thing is you won't survive if you don't know you've made the mistake in the first place. That's a fact. Because if you think that you gave something a great ride and it's plain as the nose in your face that you didn't, you, you're, you're, well, you're clearly not going to make it. And have you seen people <laughs> go by the wayside who've tried to kind of talk their way out of situations like this or who just can't well, identify I suppose if they don't think that they're doing anything wrong, mm. it's not their fault, isn't it? Not, like, not I much mean, they can do about it. There's not it, much you can yeah, do yeah. about that. You can't teach that. But, I mean, I think the main thing is you, you'll see lads come in, though, that'll be, they'll be annoyed, you know what I mean, and they'll be rattled and they'll maybe fire the helmet in the ground because they'll know, they'll know you know yourself in your heart and soul you get into the car to go home you'll go I was good there today or oh, Jesus that was bad that was bad do you know and you have many days like that though oh, everyone has yeah. days like that everyone goes through stages where maybe uh, it's just not maybe you're making the wrong decisions is that, is that pace tactical or is it like I, I went too soon I went didn't yeah I probably too far so off the pace. Yeah, too far probably reading the race reading it's it's mm. it's not it you know it's 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 not all about the last two furlongs it's getting to that point like people think it's all about you need to know ground tracks tactic be tactical aware like the, the race the reading is race huge well, like, yeah who's that lag on tendons clearly like. yeah, what suits who who's your man in front of me yeah like who is he like do you know like but nor can you can't write someone else's race either mm. do you know like that's the worst thing you can do like when you're young and you're starting out you kind of say down with the start you'd like to think if you went down to the start now in a point to point or down to the start in a maiden hurl and you were riding something that was fancy to say or in a bump or whatever it may be if you go down to the start and you know you find yourself and you're following Derek O'Connor and Jamie Codd you're not too far wrong if you're following Derek O'Connor yeah. and Jamie Codd in yeah. A point to point, because they'll get you. They'll get you to a certain mm. a certain point. But if you're ten or fifteen lengths in front of Derek O'Connor and Jamie Codd, you think there's nothing wrong with that? I'd say you're not going to survive. <laughs> right. Do you know? Yeah, because yeah. I mean, Dad, they're the kind of fellas you want to be. They're the best in the business. So if you're going down, 
if if you're riding in a maiden hurdle or beginner's chase and you rock up beside Jack Kennedy or, or, or Barry or or Russell and you know they haven't gone for home yet like why why haven't they gone for home yet like why are you going for home if they haven't gone for home mm. would you not just follow them a little bit longer and wait till they go yeah. do you know like that's kind of you learn by watching by watching the the best you but you 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 learn off them the decisions why why they sat and listen maybe they're sitting because they're hanging on to nothing uh, you know what I mean but there's a lot to be learned by uh, watching the best in in the business as well yeah for sure uh, you are watching Friday Night Racing here and Off the Ball brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland love every racing moment visit hri.ie or follow the new Twitter account at hri racing hashtag every racing moment uh, we are going to continue with uh, Friday Night Racing here we're going to get into the weekend's tips uh, with Johnny and Katie here before that we'll take a quick break. Join Bruce Betting now for a risk free first bet up to 100 euro. That's right, new Irish accounts can enjoy a risk free first bet up to 100 euro. So if your first bet loses, we'll refund your stake with a free bet. Now that's giving you more. Bruce Betting in store, online, and now on your phone. T's and C's apply. Please gamble responsibly. See dunlouis.net. You're welcome back to Friday Night Racing, which is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. We're going to get into the weekend's tips in just a moment. We're looking at Sandown and we're looking at Cork with Johnny. Uh, just to tell you, the Tote Irish Injured Jockeys Fund rolled past the 7,000 mark as Josephina ran out a, a pretty hand, a ready winner, I think, Johnny, uh, last weekend in Kilbegan. The pot now stands at an impressive 7,269. This is my first time doing Friday Night Racing and I didn't realise that it was... you've done unbelievably I, well, I, considering I, you haven't a clue what you're talking about. And I've been getting away with it for years, but... Um, I did not realise that. Uh, you had this much of a clue to be quite honest with you John no. you're doing really well the Irish action thanks, thanks this so. weekend will come from Down Royal in for you of course <laughs> tomorrow Down Royal tomorrow while Cork is the port of call for Sunday across the channel the Beverly Bullet uh, from surprisingly enough uh, Beverly and the Solario Stakes from Sandown which we'll get into in just a moment of the highlights on a busy Saturday, Saturday afternoon so your tip is Spruce Meadows at 4 o'clock in Down Royal tomorrow yeah um it was. Uh, it's great to get the. In all seriousness, it's great to get the fund up to over seven grand because it does great work. The jock injured jockeys and um, you know the, what they have to go through. Um, you know when they are injured, it's the only sport where an ambulance follows you around in your daily job. You know, and um, it is good to get up. We've had a good run lately. I watched Josephina win um, at the K Club at a wedding. Uh, Robert Pollock. Um, ex of Labrooks, a uh, good friend of mine got married on Saturday and watched it with uh, a few of his uh, cousins on the phone and it was lovely to watch because there was poetry in motion, Tony Mullins is horse in great form at the moment, great, one of the great characters in racing. Flying, yeah, I yeah. actually met uh, I met uh, the owner of the horse down in the stable yard in the car park after Quebec on Friday, he was happy out, happy out he yeah. was absolutely delighted with himself I think he bred the mare as well so, yeah, see, yeah. Like, so that, that wasn't a great race, Like, was, she'd won a Tremor and she looked like she was ordinary enough but you won a Tremor nicely and she won a Kilbegan and even though it's an ordinary race you bred that horse and you won that race Kilbegan it's it's the all it's Kerry beating Dublin for that owner and you know I I, I think racing is it, 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 it extends these opportunities of happiness that like are kind of rare in life and he was probably on cloud nine you know Oh, he was absolutely delighted with himself. I said, what time are you heading home? And he said, oh, we'll give her a pick of grass here now. We'll give her a while. And we we'll load her up. His weekend was made anyway. Yeah. Um, so that was Josephine. Uh, Spruce Meadows, four o'clock at Down Royal, trained by John Fien. Uh, he hasn't actually had a winner since early July. Um, but his horses are running fine. He's a, he's a trainer, um, very enigmatic character. If you own a horse with him, um, it'd be hard to reach him on the phone. Maybe there's nothing wrong with that, but he, he's his own man. I think he's a brilliant trainer. Uh, I think Spruce Meadows is a huge chance. I should say as well, Tote customers can enjoy free race course tickets to selected meetings throughout the year. See the tote.com for more details on that one. We've got a couple of races you want to look at. I will start with the Solario Stakes, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow at 3.35 at Sandown. There's, the ground is still uh, good to firm, and um, this is going to be an intriguing race in terms of, I suppose, uh, you know, the, the good horses for next year. Some very nice horses in it. Um, positive is possibly going to go off favourite. I'm going to take Positive on with Al Suhail, the Dubawi horse, very well-bred horse um, of Charlie Appleby's for Godolphin. And... Uh, it's it's going to be an intriguing race, I think, in terms of maybe uh, a horse emerging for... We've had some really good, nice two-year-olds already this year. Um, 
And it'll be interesting to see if, if Alistair Hill can, can build on what he's shown so far. It's a too darn hot one this race last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's going to be an interesting stallion prospect, actually, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Um, um, you know, he's um, he's he definitely runs with his heart in his sleeve. Mm. You know what I mean? And um, he, he's quick. He's very quick. You know, so it'll be interesting. Interesting to see. It's, it's a long process that stallion um, route, but um, you know, time will tell. Bought them by Dubawi as well, so maybe it'll be history repeating itself. So have you got a tip in this one, or did I just miss Alter, it? Yeah, I'll go yeah. with Alistair Hale, yeah. Good stuff. So that's uh, tomorrow at 3.35 at Sandown. We're going to look at Sunday, the 20 past 3 at Cork. Uh, the new racetrack you were saying, Johnny, yeah. is worth mentioning. I'd be interested to get Katie's view on this. There was no straight 7 furlong track in Ireland um, up until Cork, which came in um, very recently, and it just gives it an extra dimension that you've no bend, so you've you've essentially no real excuses. If you've if you've a seven furlong horse who's working well, he should be good enough to win over seven furlongs in a straight track, presuming the ground is the same at the rail as it is the other rail. Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, this is a conversation we always have at home, and you know, definitely they definitely and they go faster over a straight seven. Why? Because. It's what happens when they go, say, seven around Nace, is they'll go a certain gallop until they get as far as the bend and then they'll pick up yeah. as soon as they turn in. Yeah. And when you book out and go over seven, you really have to stay over seven and you really have to stay the trip because they'll go a real good gallop from the get-go. Usually something will break and go. And because it's straight, there's so, it lures you in, it drags you because there's no bend, there's no one saying, wait now until you turn in and then pull out and folly such and such. What happens over when you're going dead straight, they definitely go harder. And you see the last running, obviously in most races, is usually the slowest, but definitely over seven, over straight seven, that um, there'll be a huge pull from the one to the winning post, a, bit, a big divide with, with the handicaps as, as well, because you really have to stay. I think that's the challenge as well for a jockey in that if you're riding around a tight track like Sligo over seven furlongs compared to riding a straight seven at Cork, it's it's literally like, uh, there's no comparison really. It's a completely different tactical puzzle for you. You're running straight into open air. You have very little cover probably because you could have 10 horses in a line basically. Some will duck in for cover. But if you go out in front at Sligo, you have the rail and you can kind of start steadying up because they're all disadvantaged in behind because they, they've no room to go around you for one thing. If they want to go around you, they have to go very wide and they're forfeit and ground. Yeah. So there's all these tactical kind of um, nuances of it. Well, like as you were mentioning earlier on, Katie, about following an experienced jockey, like that is one way of helping kind of know what pace you should be riding at. Like is that similar if, if you're uh, riding on a, on a track that has a big turn like that? Oh well, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's like anything. It depends. It depends. Uh, different factors. I mean, but when you're talking about flat racing, obviously, when you look down, you look at, say, the fancy horses, what's drawn around you that's fancied. And you'd like to think that such and such should be banged there. So if I can get a lead off him, he should bring me down to a certain point. Mm. But you're not going to folly the 100 to 1 shot. Do you know what I mean? When you break, and if, you, if I chose to folly the the favourite and chose to folly the 60 to 1 shot, I'm going to folly the favourite. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a better chance of getting me to where I want to be. Um, you know, when it comes to national hunt racing, it definitely depends on what you're riding ground. I mean, we didn't maybe see it last winter, but I love watching the Irish lads riding soft ground. Yeah. And I love watching Chetlin when it's soft and watching the Irish lads ride. I think they're hands and heels above, they're different gravy. They're just, they, they, do you ever turn on the telly sometimes in England and they'd be like, they, you think, you know, it's they're coming down to the second last and like. you'll be like, you, they, they could be halfway down the back. Yeah. There could be seven left to jump. Yeah. Yeah. You never see that at home. Right. Always at home. It always turns into, it's a very much a tactical affair. It's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. I, I actually think I, I fell in love with racing watching Paul Carberry ride races like that where it was kind of like a computer game where there'd be all this and next thing Paul would be just going like this and just catching them up like you were playing in the, in the arcade in Salt Hill when you were a kid or whatever. Next thing Paul would be just still, still like half a mile to go and he's way out the back but he's just like, no, no, I'll pick them off and he has it in his head. Soft ground. Soft just ground. Just this stop in front. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's, I think it's I, I, lovely to watch. I, without trying to generalise here, it's Irish racehorse 
Irish horsemen versus British horsemen seem to have more patience. I, and I, I don't know what that's... Maybe it's to do with the fact that it's quicker ground over there more often, but the Irish uh, horsemen are more inclined to wait because the ground over here is softer. I think that might be something to do with it. Yeah, I think you have to be definitely more tactical aware here, maybe. Um, I mean, and we're not, I'm not speaking for everyone in England mm. on a whole, but there's definitely different types of race riding, and they ride a lot tighter here, ride an awful lot tighter. And usually it turns into it turns into coming down to the you know, there'd be a bunch there in Navin and those really good maiden hurdles like you'll see them there'll be there'll okay there'll be a certain set of bunches there'll be horses that aren't good enough then there'll be the good horses but the tactical the cutting off and the following and the watching and the getting the run from the second last down to the last I think it's it's sound like you miss it there it's lovely to watch. Yeah. Uh. Very interesting. Um, so th this the, race at 20 past three on it's, Sunday. It's a 40 grand um, EBF Premier Nursery. I should mention yeah. as well, um, in the 420, a horse by the name of Conversant for uh, Dennis Hogan, I think um, what Katie said there about the straight uh, seven will, will totally suit this horse down to the ground. Um, the nursery is tricky enough. Not a huge entry for the race. Uh, Royal County Down is favourite. Yeah, seems. only seven entries. Royal County Down. Um, there's one of two horses by Glen Eagles here. He's a first season stallion I'm sure you're a fan of. Uh, yeah, sure. God, he's been absolutely super. I'd love, to, I'd love to get my hands Slightly on him. Like the audio price range, maybe. Uh, probably so, but yeah. you never Not know. You never know. Um, silence, please. Just might have uh, the measure of Roy County Down. She's only a filly, but she was good for us to mount. Jesse seems to have an unbelievable amount of of fillies, um, and I, I think Glen Eagles could be a very, very good stallion. Um, and it could be between the pair, actually. Ross has a runner in that race, actually. An epaulette filly. She was unlucky. She didn't like Sligo the last day. Different ball game. All. Altogether, but she Dolce goes, Sicily. Dolce Sicily. She's an epaulette filly. She goes back to Cork on Sunday, and um, hopefully, I think that straight seven would be a lot different to her now. She'd way prefer that to uh, to uh, to uh, Sligo the last Nathan day. Nathan Cross came five as well. Nathan I had a bottle of red, uh, shared a bottle of red wine at a restaurant last night in Italian. Thought it was absolutely delicious. I asked him where it was, Sicily. So I thought you were. I thought you were going to tell me I shared a bottle of red wine with Ross last night. I was like, I would have been a bit bogey now. <laughs> Ross, I divorced myself from that comment. <laughs> but it uh, could be a sign. As well as that, if the race cuts up a little bit, you have you know, they are two-year-olds as well. Ross's horse will be a price. Yeah, let's yeah. just remind people of the tips then. Uh, so tomorrow at 3.35 at Sandown, the Solario Stakes, you're going for Elsie Heil uh, at 2-1. to one. Silence, please, is a 4-1 to one shot in that race at Cork at 20 past 3. And then the charity bet? Yeah, the charity bet is uh, Spruce Meadows Spruce in, at Down Royal. 12-1, to one, I think. Uh, I don't think he'll no. be that now. If if John Fiennes horses wouldn't normally be missed, and he was unlucky at Leperson last time, you might get seven or eight to one. I, I think he's a very good each way chance. Good stuff, um, Kenny. Just before we let you go, I mean, in terms of what the future brings for you, it's something that we didn't get around to in the first part we of the show. We didn't even talk about Ruby. Uh, we didn't even talk about talk yeah. about Ruby. Is right. Two minutes about Ruby. Some revelations or something. Two minutes about Ruby. Yeah. Two very quick minutes on Ruby. How has he been since? He's retiring? in great form. Not a bother. I'm having time of his life. Is he? Um, oh yeah, he looks fantastic. There he is. And um, she had a great career. You know, we lo we loved. You know, we miss it and we loved watching him. Do you know, especially when I retired, I got a great kick out of watching him. And, um, you know, but a lovely way to go out in your own terms. So you couldn't write it, there's nothing like it. And um, he did go out in the right terms, didn't he? He was just, it was, when you were there, it was like, you know, if you were racing that day, it was kind of like I was there and uh, the lads who were humming and hauling about going and didn't go, you could kind of say to them, you probably should have gone racing movies after retiring mm -hmm. there, he just did it in the parade ring. And it was a really one of these rare racing days where he was like, I was there, I remember him coming into the parade ring afterwards and telling them, yeah, that's me, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it's a lovely way to go out on your own terms because not, you did not, similar, not didn't you? a lot of people. Yeah, you, yeah, you went out on the winner as well. Yeah. Also planned, you kind of did the same thing as Ruby, waiting for that winner eventually. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be Punchestown though. He yeah. had a great chance of riding the winner in Punchestown, I didn't. So <laughs> um, it was an extra bonus for me, thank God. Katie, thanks a million for joining us uh, on Friday Night Racing today. Johnny, best of luck on Sunday to the thank kingdom. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very nervous. I'll, I'll be putting money on all your horses here to try and uh, kind of ease the pain that Kerry will inevitably bring me on Sunday. So downplaying my chances, Johnny, but thanks a million uh, for joining us. Friday Night Racing and Off the Ball is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. Chat to you next week. Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball. Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.